What's up everybody, Jason here. Hope you're having a great day. So today I'm gonna to show a couple of advanced filtering options. So this was based on a comment from Fabian who wanted to know how do you do filtering when you've got multiple different filters? So let's take a look at this artist site that I'm using for all my tutorials. I've got a list of songs and I've got genres and record labels. So let's just say I wanted to be able to filter based on both of those. So I've got my filter options here. I've got a genre dropdown, which just grabs all of the genres and record label that grabs all the record labels. And now I can pick pop music, for example. So I'm gonna see just the ones that are tagged with pop. Now, if I only wanted Bob's Radio Shack, I could pick that and it will filter that as well. And now I can actually get rid of these if I want. So if I didn't wanna filter by pop music, I can get rid of that, but it's still filtering by Bob's Radio Shack, and here's how you build it. Okay, so the filter group, I'm just gonna call Song Filters, and I've got a dropdown for genres that grabs all the genres, and record label, same thing, it just grabs all of the record labels, and this is how the tags show up. So there is a group, uh, Filters, let's call this Filters Selected, just to make it more clear. And this is checking to see if either of those dropdowns, if anything's been selected in either of them. So if the genre value is not empty or the record label value is not empty, then show this group. And the same condition is on both of these tags. These are just text objects. They've been formatted to look like tags. So this one is the genre one. If the genre value is not empty, show this. If the record label value is not empty, show this. Now both of these have workflow set up and the workflow for these is set up to clear those tags when you click on them. So here I'm just using the font awesome shortcut for that little X circle thing on there. And the workflow is really easy. Now there is one little trick with it because in Bubble you can't change the value of dropdowns directly. So you have to put those in a group. So each of those dropdowns is inside of its own group and I'm just using the reset group option and I'm calling you know reset filter uh, or reset label filter from the workflow. So let's just take a look at the genre one. Edit workflow, all this does is it just resets the group filter dropdown and that's what removes it, that's what clears the dropdown and then that's what clears the search results for genre. Now the last thing, and uh, again, one of the more important things is your actual repeating group. So your search needs to uh, search for the conditions for however many filters that you want. And I've got, give me all the tracks where genre contains what's been selected in the genre dropdown, or give me any tracks that uh, are, are using that record label based on what has been selected in that record label dropdown. And down here is where the magic happens. So ignore empty constraints has to be checked. So this essentially will say, go get me the tracks based on what is in this or this. And if you clear this, it's gonna be and. So it's gonna say where genre contains whatever's in that dropdown and whatever's in that dropdown. And if both of those are empty, it's only going to return tracks that have an empty genre and an empty record label. So make sure you pick that. And another cool thing that you can do is if I wanted to say reset the entire search option here, I can just put a button here and say reset and then add a workflow. And I'm gonna use the exact same reset a group or pop-up and I want to clear the song filters group and then that will get rid of both of them. So I want contemporary and I want Bob's Radio Shack and reset now clears both of them. And you could do some nice stuff as well. So I could make that reset button not show up. So I could have that say collapsed and not visible on display. And I'll use the exact same condition as this group right here. Or I could just move this reset button into here. Reset all uh, would be another option as well. But for this one, I can just copy this condition and I can paste it here now the reset button won't show until I've started filtering something. So that will reset all, and it will also, if I've got both selected. 
So here's my data thing. So I've got genres and record labels that are both links to each of those data things. And that's what the filtering is being done by. So that's it. You can have as many of those constraints as you want, and as many as those search conditions. Just always make sure you select that little checkbox that says ignore empty constraints because that essentially acts as an or. Now I might do a more advanced video for this because once you get into complex data things, there's a different way to do it. And essentially, as a spoiler alert, you add a workflow on whatever the dropdown is and you specifically do a do search on those conditions. So it's gonna go back to the database and grab those. What this one is doing is it's just filtering the list that's in place at the moment. It's not going back and doing another search. So with Bubble's new workflow unit restrictions, if you've got a huge site with a lot of filters and conditions that you expect to get a lot of use, you might just have to take a look and see how much workflow it's using for that. So hope you enjoyed this uh, short one. Thanks again for the question, Fabian. Hopefully this answers your question. Remember to hit like and subscribe. See you next time.